Welcome back to Real Talk. Remember, you can join the conversation via the hashtag hash Real Talk with Tamima on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. Remember, tonight we are putting divorce and separation into perspective. We're actually just getting real on this issue that affects a lot of families, not just the couple, but even the children. And I also have with me in studio tonight, I have experts, I have a lawyer who's going to be putting a lot of the legalese into perspective. Right now, I want to introduce my next guest, who is Anwa Moyo. Anne is 35. She got married at 16, had five kids. Then at some point, her marriage broke down and she found herself living on the streets with five children. Anne, welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell me, what, what happened? Because obviously you must have loved each other. Yeah. Mm. So when did things start to change? Mambo ilialibika pale ni kwa housewife. Sasa mambo ikaharibika. Kwa housewife, watu wenu wa kuelewi, wana kutenga. Hakuna mtu wana kuadastad. So maisha ikawa gumu, mbaga ni kajikuli kwa kwa street, mahali pale, na watoto, na shukuru mungu. Sa ilifikaje ile mbaka ukamua, sasa chamia fadhali ni toke. What, what was going on? Ni watu wa wali ni nukia ni mama yake. He came, makapata accident. Sasa buwana yako? He, buwana yangu. Hmm. Sasa alikaa kinyata ini one years koma. Sasa katika hiyo hali, watu wa wakawa meni inukia. Kukinukia kiaje? Yani because... kuninukia, yani ni kusema, hawa nitaki, wanatamali ni mali tukonayo, watekenyala. Sasa umelewa. Sasa mulikuwa munaishi na buwana yako wapi? Tulikuwa tunaishi na buwana yangu, you sit there, sinai. Sinai, na mulikuwa na shamba kule tuliku, sinai? Sio shamba, hmm. tulishikaneo kuna robi. Sasa ilikuwa hapa sinai, tukua na bloti kwa kubwa kwa na mali. Lakini sasa wakati alipata accident hata one week ikuwa imeisha. Sasa watu wao wakawa wameugana. Sasa wakawa ni wanitaki. Na wakasema wao wanijui. Hapo naye wakati tulioana na yeye kunipeleka nyumbani. Na tukisema hivi, yeah, yu ukisema yeah. mzee alikuwa amepata accident. Yeah. Bado alikuwa hai. Ali, walikuwa hai. Alikuwa hai kwenye sitali lakini wale hawakujali wakaja. Yeah, hawajali hata wamujali. Mm. Hivyo hata wanauliza heli ya kufe. Kwa sababu kama kufanya hivyo ni kusema tayari wamemua. Na akiwa pale Kenya hata wewe ndio ulikuwa unamuangalia. Mimi ndio ulikuwa ninamuangalia shida ilikuwa mingi kwa sababu nasikia unasikia baada tuungane kwa hii jambo imetedeka ni kuwa kinyume. Sasa ingekuwa ni mimi nimebaki mimi peke yangu. So ikawa maisha ni gumu. Wakati sasa alitoka pale Kenya kukuja akawa naye ameugana na watu wao tena. Iza ni baada ya kuwa sitali mwaka moja, wewe ndio unamchunga, wewe ndio unamjali, unamwangalia kila kitu. Everything ni mimi. Kile kiko ni kwamba sababu sikukuwa na uwezo. Alikuja akawa aka paralyzed. Yao ikawa mikono ikukuwa na shida, ikawa ime imejikucha. Na sasa miguu ilikuwa tu amefujika at least tu sio sana. Lakini sababu ya kutopelekwa tisa hakuna mtu anaweza nishikilia yu pande. Sasa sababu nasikia watu wao baada wause ile manyumba ama wafanye kama wanafanya wakuje wamsaidie. Hawana shughuli na yeye. Sasa akawa ame paralyzed mpaka mwisho akawa hakuna kitu anaweza fanya. Kwa sababu akupata sasa physiotherapy yeah. and everything that he, he needed medically. Needed. Yeah. Yeah. Sasa so, wakawa wenye ametoka hospitali akakuja na yeye bado akaugana na wao. They carry him nyumba wakauza sasa hapo ndio maisha ikawa sasa imeacha magumu. Sasa yeye mwenyewe alichagua anataka kurudi kwa watu Mata wao hakutambui watu. kama bibi urudi kwenye. Hata watoto walisema hawatabui. Na sasa hizo kwenye kwenye hali ilikuwa aje? Why couldn't you go back home? Kwetu hali ilikuwa gumu juu. Nakumbuka hata mamangu wakati huo alikuwa anaisha ta nyumba ya maratasi upande huko imara daima huko. Hivyo usige pata wa kubila isipokuwa kwa Mungu pekee. Mm -hmm. So yeah. ukaona hapo afadhali tu uende tu ukajitafutie na Nairobi. Sasa ni wende ukajitafutie na Nairobi. But kitu nilikuwa nimeamua ni kwamba nasimama na Mungu. Sasa tisige fanya vile kuna fanya ngoje. Hata watu wetu masaa walifika mahali wakaniambia ni fire ngi nitokeze kama wale wengine. Lakini nachukua sababu ya kujua Mungu yuko. Hamu ni Bwana ametoni ni Bwana ameniacha ama watu wote wameniacha lakini Mungu ako pamoja nami. Na nikawa nimesimama. Na nikawa tu ninaubida idhiki huko nilikaa karibu mwezi moja na wiki mbili. Ukiishi na ukilala na watoto. Ni narara ya. Yeah. Na kitu ninashukuru Mungu ni kwamba watoto tulikuwa na wao huko mfuasa sagini inanyesha na hakuna mmoja hata alikuwa na ngoja kata homa. Na mmoja sagini inanyesha. Sasa maisha ikawa iko magumu, kasawali ikawa gumu lakini nashukuru Mungu. Na watoto sasa ule mchanga alikuwa na miaka ngapi? 5 6 years there, 5. Na the, the oldest oldest na yeye alikuwa juu. Nilikuwa nilisa haraka haraka katika ilikuwa ama um, 8 8 there. Too. So ilikuwa na between miaka 6 na yeah, miaka walikuwa wameachana eh watoto watano. Watoto watano walikuwa wameachana hivyo hivyo. So ile inaka kama inaitwa football team. <laughs>
Na sasa huyu mwana huyu yes. mwanaume yes. ukiwa pale kwa siri ulijaribu kumtafuta tena kuzungumza naye nilitafuta lakini watu wao waliweka vikwaso mm -hmm. ama hata angekuwa pale tugeogea hata mwange kubali watu ogea hata naye kwa simu lakini nashukuru Mungu sababu katika hiyo hali safari Mungu alikuja kanifungulia je ya kwenda nje ukienda ukapata kazi ukafanya kazi nikapata kazi huko ya nikapata kazi pande wa Jordan na nikakaa huko nikagonga kasi miaka mbili nao hapo mama yangu alikubali sasa hiyo kukaa nao watoto Abu alijua tulisi nikiwa huko atakuwa anapata ka kitu. Na nikikuuliza huyu mwanaume mlikuwa ameoana kwa kanisa did you have your marriage certificate? No. So ilikuwa ile customary marriage. Ile tudio hiyo. Lakini watu wake wanasema hako amekupeleka nyumbani eh. wa kutambue. So amko amefika hata hapo bado. Kufika. Yaani ile kukupeleka kwao. Yeah. Kufanya uh, kimila, kidesturi. Hapana, huko amenipeleka pale. Yeah. Okay, right about now I want to introduce uh, Paulette Achieng. Paulette is a lawyer. She runs a law firm, uh, Lumalas Achieng and Kaveri Advocates. So she specializes in family law and is a mediator. So Paulette, I want to rope into this conversation right about now. Because I think so far we've had Emma's story and we've also had Lillian's. Uh, we've also had Anne's story. So if you look at the two stories, because we have on one hand a woman who did not have any of the legal documents, so to speak. And on the other hand, a woman who thought she did but she later came to find out that this document is actually just a piece of paper because it's invalid. So what does the law say about marriage in Kenya? Okay, it's very interesting. Thank you for your question. It's very interesting that uh, on one hand, we are being told of acts. There are acts that she's talking about, Cup 150, Cup uh, 151. Those were also previous acts. And a lot of people might not know that we have new marriage acts. Mm -hmm. In 2014, a new act came into place. There's also a matrimonial uh, causes act that lays down the procedures. So you must know under what law are you getting married. In Kenya, there are, there are several kinds of mar marriages. There's a customary law that she's talking about. If it's a Hindu marriage, what kind, or have you fulfilled the requirements? Do you know that if you change religion, that can annul your marriage. Under which part of the act do you want your marriage? Is it an Islamic marriage? So my advice would just be talk to a lawyer at that point, be very clear what you want, and remember that there are several uh, requirements of marriage, like the age of consent. In Anne's case, she was like 15 years when she was getting married. Is that even a valid? Marriage. That's why you never took the, you never got any of the legal documents because you got married at 16. Yeah. So you're still two years actually under the. Yes, you legal don't age. have the capacity to, to contract a marriage. There are also issues of the relation. Does the person have a previous marriage? So there, uh, sometimes we confuse uh, a valid marriage because you cannot get a divorce from a marriage that never existed in the first place. So have you met the requirements? Do you have consent? Have you, have you followed all the requirements? And some of these requirements, just make Google your friend, go to the AG's website, find out what, what is the current law, what are the current requirements, or go, go talk to a lawyer. Okay, so I want to rope in also Diana Sinde, who is a life coach, and he's an expert in relationship counseling. So Diane, probably just looking at Anne's case in particular, because I like that you said, Anne ulioa ukiwa 16, Anne wenyo hapa na cheka, because now that you're wiser, <laughs> she knows better. <laughs> it is true. It's yes, true. you know better. Yeah. I am so impressed because I'm, I'm from seeing two strong women over here. As in they're so strong, even when they're laughing, you can actually see these are fighters. And so I just want to just appreciate them for doing that. When it comes to Anne's case, she had no idea what she was getting herself into. You know, you're 16, you're very, very young. And these are the kind of covers that we don't uh, put on ourselves to protect ourselves. Because maybe at that particular time, this man said that yeah, he loved her. And now she was like, you know what? Uh, people get married, it's my time, I'm going to get married. But So she gets into this situation where there's no preparation, there's no counseling, there's no guidance, and then you end up getting into a situation where you crumble and you bring in innocent children into the picture. There's so many people who are getting into marriage without proper preparation. You cannot enter into something as serious as marriage and not be prepared for it. And you could be getting into marriage for the right motives, but the other person is getting into that marriage for the wrong motives. In her particular case, in Emma's case, she had no idea about these cups, but the, the, the gentleman did. And so her motive perhaps was love. 
His motive perhaps can be questionable. In Anne's case, we don't even know about his motives. Maybe at that particular time, he loved her. But you see, as the man who claimed or who really, really loved this woman at that particular time, he did not protect her from his family. And that's why even when you're getting married, it is important to introduce your partner, your spouse, your future spouse to your family so that at least you can have that cover and at the end of the day, go through premarital counseling. Here you will foresee these things. Because even if you have that legal document, it's, it's important for you to be legally protected. Then you also need to have a marriage that has life. So counseling and preparation will allow you to have life. Counseling is not a very scary, bad word. It is just you coming to somebody who is a neutral person who will walk with you through understanding what you're about to get yourself into. Because you can love a person, but then you mess it up but not knowing how to love and what not to do. How many years has it been since uh, you separated from your husband? I know it's uh, 12. 12 years. Yeah, 12 so years. in those 12 years, amekutafuta, yeah. ametafuta watoto, amekusaidia in any way or form? No, 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 no. Tangu utoke hamujai yongea, hamujai patani. Tangu utoke hapo, hamujai yongea, hamujai yongea, hamujai after two months, after mama yake kuwaga. Do mama yake hage taka tuwe na connected. Ibanda ngepeza wage shukua. Kini ya meyanga di wakati ni mimi nili mtafuta di onu mpigie. Nika mpigia. Di watu list ni mpereke watoto waone watoto ni wabig. <laughs> ya sabu nasigia yeye siyo kupenda kuwake. Unaona vile yenye aliona vile mabu imekua. Akachio atafanya nini. Kwa hivyo sasa di alienda kupande wa watu wao. Na sasa nika sema ni mzuri. Ni mtafuta. Ni kwa ni na mpenda kini kwa sababu kina kiliendelea. Na and soon it is only three months. Ni kampeleke ni kamuona kauna watoto. And if you leo, have you been able to since move on, get mm. married again? No, I don't want. Why? Ah, so we are not going to. We are not going to be a man. We are going to be a man. You are good. I'm going to be a man. So for you, it is. We are me, myself, and my children. Amen. Yeah. Inaisha hapo, full stop. On that light note, I want to introduce... Um, I want to introduce Evelyn Ogendo. So Evelyn is a psychologist. She specializes in family. Evelyn, how can women and men actually just recover when something like this happens to you? Uh, well, first, maybe the thing I'd like to address about marriage... Maybe uh, most of the time, the young people, when they get married, they have this assumption that all love, of all marriages, there is a love aspect. So, to the frustration, sometimes, you know, even when they get married in the church, sometimes maybe the, the man doesn't love her, and it is so frustrating even for him to have such kind of a feeling. Such kind of hidden feelings are the ones that, uh, when somebody can't take it anymore, you know, you, you equally cannot take it f uh, maybe from yourself. And then there's this assumption about marriage that uh, when, uh, when, you get well, when you get married, people have this thing of it's a bed of roses. I saw, I saw so and so, you know, the way they are driving to church, the way they are taking their kids out. And then you just have the outer picture. So when you, when you see them or maybe you are standing somewhere by the bus stop, you, you, are, you are like, I want my marriage to be like that one. And then when you see them, you, you have no idea what it is in their inside life. Because sometimes people get married most of the time for the wrong reasons. One of them, it is money. Without, without an emotional attachment, that can be very difficult in that marriage. But this is something that people ignore. Like uh, a young girl can get married to somebody who is quite old because of the money aspect and stuff. You know, she likes uh, you know, living a good she life. Wants a certain life. A certain life mm. which this guy can afford. Trust you me, in the real sense, when they go to bed, for lack of a better word, when they're making love to each other or sex or something, this girl has to think about somebody else in order to satisfy this man. Because you are so distracted. You are, you, you are so, you, you can't even understand your own self. How did I get myself in this? And then the thought of leaving that money and that comfort zone frustrates you. And also this, uh, this man, you know, there's a way they marry so early when they have seen, they have not uh, really had this kind of experience of so many beauties, you know. Th that first love, when they think that uh, maybe marriage is colorful sex all the time, they don't know that you can be in a marriage and you're not having that sex because you don't have that connection. You are not taking care of your emotional needs. What are your emotional needs? This person you have with, 
in case all the money, everything is taken away, is he your friend? Because I believe when you are getting married to someone who is your friend, when the love is gone, the friendship remains. And somebody is not going to believe this until you get there. And then couples don't also think about, when I get into this marriage, how are we going to resolve our conflicts? Because conflicts are in every situation. That is what happened, the silence war. The silence war that is in relationships, and trust you me, it's unless you, you say the truth about what you feel. You, if you can't tell somebody else, tell yourself and maybe resolve it. So this man decides to desert. So how, how do you then as a woman cope? First accept, I have a problem. And then ask, describe that problem. You can just do it on your own. Describe that exact problem. What is one of your fears? One, what will people say is the biggest idea. And that's usually the biggest one. The biggest thing. I think everyone here talked about that. Huh? And probably, let me just rope in Diane here. When do you know, at what point do you make the call as a man or as a woman that <coughs> now I have to leave? You know, most people don't get into marriage hoping it's going to end. And uh, you hope that it's going to last for a very long time. Uh, in uh, Emma's case, she mentioned some red flags which were glaring, you know, and she would actually find him cheating. But then I can imagine at, at that particular time she was hoping that he's going to change or something's going to happen. She was being a good she wife. She was being a good wife. And sometimes it is that hope that keeps people there. You're being buttered, you're being beaten, you're being cheated upon, you're being insulted and disrespected, but you stay because of that hope. So when do you know that this is it? To some people, there are various levels. For some, just an SMS of infidelity, they see that they're like, you know what, I am done. <laughs> I'm out of the door. I am done, especially when they've had a lot of uh, insecurities or, or also infidelity in the past. So for some, it could be financial issues. Like, I don't like the way you manage money. I walk into this marriage, and here I am, I'm finding out that you've got two million debt, and you're squandering our money. I cannot take this anymore. So I will say the best time for you, if you're going to quit, because let me tell you, you choose to enter into a marriage, you choose to stay. And when people divorce, when, when they separate, let us as a society, let's not point fingers and see them as failures. They did not want that marriage to end. So when you see that you have tried every means possible to talk with the person, to try your best, to go for counseling, I would request people to also go for counseling because the bit about counseling is that you see uh, things from each other's perspective. So counseling allows you both to have a balanced perspective. So when you've tried all these mitigating options and then you're seeing there's nothing going forward, let me tell people, divorce doesn't have to be nasty. Separation doesn't have to be nasty. There's an amicable way. As a grown-up, if you've seen, you know what, you've tried everything, we cannot go in anywhere. There's an amicable way of just separating, even if you're not going to remarry again or just raise the children as separate grown adults. Okay, so on that note, we'll be taking a very quick break. When we come back, still more to come here on Real Talk. Don't go too far.